Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And my card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. And as always, if you're new here, the Color Throwdown Challenge is just a weekly challenge. There's just a group of us. We do this just for fun. I will have a link to it in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video in the description box. So you can jump over there and check it out and get inspiration and all the fun things and then play along yourself if you'd like. There's a new one every Wednesday. And for my card, I used all oldie but goodie favorites, specifically my little uh, mushroom stems wafer die set that I have done many videos on, so many that I have a playlist. I will link to that in the end screen. You guys can check it out, all the videos I've done using these little wafer dies because I don't know what it is. I just, I enjoy them. I love creating with them. So this time for all of my die cuts, I just use a combination of oxide sprays and distress spray stains. Just for funsies. Why not? I like experimenting and jumping around with different ways to color my die cuts. So as always, I will have links to everything I used in the description box below the video as well. All of my links are affiliate links. That just means that if you use my links, if you click on a link and end up placing an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. That's what helps pay my bills, keeps the garage heated, all the things. And then yeah, keep watching and I'll show you guys how I made this card. Okay, so I started off with um, some distress watercolor paper and the detail ringlet plate wafer die, which is A2 size, as is my watercolor paper. So I wasn't sure at this point because I was thinking I was probably gonna use the entire background. I just taped it into place so that I don't end up like cutting part of it off and making it less than A2 sized. So I just used my uh, Craft Perfect tape, taped on the top and bottom, ran it through my die cut machine, and then it creates the perfect piercing detail. I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, I love love when wafer dies add like piercing, um, stitch details, etc, etc. So after running it through my die cut machine, got it out of the, the wafer die there, removed the tape from the back of it, and then I'm going to add distress sprays. And I'm using both oxide and spray stains for everything. Like it's the same color, but I'm using both versions of the sprays. Do you need to do this? No. I was just, like a, like the title of the video said, I was just playing around. I was kind of curious to see what would happen. <laughs> so I sprayed with tumble glass oxide spray, added a bit of water, sopped up the most of it with um, some paper towel here. Just That just lightens it. It's just another thing I've been kind of playing with lately. Just sometimes I like to, you know, spray the heck out of it or ink smush, you know, add tons of layers. And then lately I've been liking like spraying and then sopping most of it up. So I get a lighter impression, but you still get all the like actual spray splatter. That said, you can also just skip this and do like ink smushing or blending. The The options are endless. I like playing with, with my sprays. I love making a mess like this. <laughs> I do. I really do. It's fun. So, and because the sprays are unpredictable, and for me, that's that's actually a good thing because yes, I can be way too much of a control freak. So I would always spray with the oxide first, and then I would add a bit of the spray stain, more so like with a lighter hand, like I wouldn't press the nozzle all the way down, and that's how I would get the the splotchy effect, which I really liked. So I did mode lawn for the one piece. This is mustard seed. And then let everything dry. And I'm oh, and I'm also doing a piece with picked raspberry. So oxide, a little bit of water, sop up the excess, and then add some some splotchy splatteriness with the um, spray stain. So I let everything dry, and then I'm gonna start die cutting all my different pieces. And of course, I'm using that mushroom stems wafer die that I love. That's what the pink is for. That's for the like mushroom caps. For the greenery, I'm using another oldie but goodie favorite that I've used in so many videos. That's the windswept leaves wafer dye, and I'll have links to everything down below like I always do. And then for the yellow, I was using the layered bird bunch die set. So I got all my pieces die cut, and then yeah, I ended up die cutting the background with a circle wafer die, but I'll come back to that later. So I had all my pieces, and then for the bird, I was like, I don't want them all to be like one shade of yellow. There, there needs to be a bit of, you know, um, differentiation here. So I pulled out squeeze lemonade and did the exact same thing. Sprayed with oxide, 
sopped up a bunch of it, added some um, spray stain in the squeeze lemonade color as well. Let that dry. And then I'm using um, antique linen because this is going to be the, the undersides of the mushrooms and the stems. So I sprayed that with the oxide, sopped up the excess after adding a bit of water, and then used the um, antique linen spray stain to add the, the splattery splotchy bits. And like I said, you can totally do this with just like one type of spray, but I have them all and I have fun using them. <laughs> so why not? So then I die cut everything and then I'm using uh, a little tray to hold and I'll have a link to it is um, from Spellbinders. They came out with these recently and of course I ordered um, a set of them. I'm liking them just to hold, you know, all my little, all my little pieces and things along with the triangle trays that I've shown in a bajillion videos as well. So that's what I was using to hold all the, all the little pieces from the, the bird wafer dies. Cause those, the layered bird bunch, it die cuts all the pieces to make four little birds. And then the other oldie but goodie die set that I've used in a bajillion videos is the CZ Design Basic Trio. I just used the little Hugs wafer die and I die cut scraps of black cardstock with it. And then I'm stacking three layers together with Craft Hacky Glue to give it dimension. You gotta do that. It's just as Laura Basson sings, dimension is life. So stack those together and then I'm going to assemble my, my little mushrooms. So I've got all my pieces. I'm just going to lay them all out and then I'm just going to quickly assemble. This is sped up in editing. I didn't, I don't move this quickly. I wish I did. I really wish I could. <laughs> Can you imagine how much I could get done if I could move this quickly in real life? Seriously. Seriously. Anyway, I assembled everything, just gluing the mushroom stems to the, to the undersides. And then you add the little cap. I really like these with picked raspberry. I'm like, oh, these are cute. These existed in real life, though. They would be, like, super poisonous. Because, yeah, there's those, like, red and white mushrooms. I think they're, like, super poisonous. I don't know anything about mushrooms, really. I don't. Why? I, I can't even tell you guys why I love this little die set so much. I don't know what it is. It's just one of those things. I love creating with it. I think in my head it's because I'm like, mushrooms are a neutral. You know? They can just go for any occasion. Why not? Anyway. For the little birds... I used just a black marker, which was just a Copic marker. Any black marker will work. And I colored the little beak areas just to just to cover that. Um, I kept the bodies as that lighter squeeze lemonade. And then the, the accessories, you know, the, the tops of their heads and their wings. I used the mustard seed pieces and then just adhered them together using my um, craft tacky glue. I was using my reverse tweezers because some of these pieces are smaller. So once I got them assembled for the eyes, I just took um, some of the little die cuts and I, I colored those with the black marker too versus uh, running this through with like a scrap of black cardstock. It's just, why? Why bother? So I took the little pieces, quickly colored them with that same um, Copic marker and then just put little dabs of the craft tacky glue right in there and then stuck the stuck little eyes into place wiped away any of the excess glue and then my little birds are assembled and they're just so cute so i've got my background that yeah i die cut with a circle wafer die just something a little different for once and then um i had already somewhat figured out my layout like off camera so i wanted to like add these um mushrooms this was also why i cut the background with the circle wafer die is because this windswept leaves the the big the big individual die cut it's you know on that curve so it just fits you know along a circle like so perfectly so i was like ooh, i should die cut the background as a circle i don't do that very often i don't know why anyway adhered you know all my little mushrooms and all my little leaf die cuts with the craft tacky glue and then I was originally going to have the bird kind of lower down and then have the sentiment a little higher up and then changed my mind last minute. I was like, oh, no, I want the bird to be like sitting on one of these mushrooms because he's just little and cute, you know. So the sentiment I adhered along the bottom of this circle and then the little bird, I'm going to add a couple of thin foam squares to because I've got a fair bit of dimension going on just with the layers of the die cuts themselves. So got that into place. And then I've got extra, a couple extra mushrooms and a, I was able to use like kind of the edge of the green piece and get one more little leaf die cut out of it to put on the inside. 
And then for my sentiment, this is another oldie but goodie. This is from the Extra Talkative set. And I stamp that with black ink. I just put my card base into my Misty, stamp the sentiment. And then I'm just adhering these remaining little die cuts onto the inside of the card. So once I get these adhered into place, I can then adhere the um, circle scene that I had created. So I'm going to adhere this with craft tacky glue. Leave that for a couple minutes to let the glue start to set up. Once the glue's set up, I can then flip this card over and trim off um, the bit that is hanging over the side. Just using the edge of the card as my guide. So got that trimmed off. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I've got some yellow confetti. These ones are some Trinity Stamps um, confetti. So fiddled with that for a bit because of course it just it wanted to be difficult. Plus I, I didn't. I didn't file down my nails when I painted them the other day. So my nails are getting like ridiculously long, which I was like, ooh, they look so nice. I love them when they're long. Yeah, until I'm like fiddling with confetti. <laughs> my nails are driving me nuts. Anyway, whatever. Got the confetti into place, a little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I paired this with a dandelion envelope from Simon Says Stamp. And that finished off this card. So like I said in the intro, I will have links to all the things in the description box below the video. So you just expand that. You can see all the links, the link to my blog post, my social media, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can just check that out below if you are interested. And as always, thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't. I would love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.